Trump. 2024, baby. Yeah. I'm going to come. Hey, I'll, I, I, I like RFK Jr., even if he's got a worm in his head. I did that, and I forgot about YouTube. Oh, yeah. Pull it. Pull it. Uh, what is that one? I am the pull-out king. Yeah, nice. Works! This is why we're the number one comedy business podcast in the world. Of- Eric! <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm on fire. iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can find podcasts. We on that B. Uh, this episode is sponsored by Zupyak, Z-U-P-Y-A-K dot com. That's Zupyak, Z-U-P-Y-A-K dot com. It's the first search optimized AI writer. And it's on the market where search data is integrated into the AI writer workflow. No knowledge needed about SEO to create content. You sure about that? It'll have yeah. a better search impact in seconds, not hours. If you go to Zupyak, Z-U-P-Y-A-K dot com, promo code SWEAT, get the hookup. Holler if you hear me. Holler if you hear me. Huh. I've told you, you don't get to point at the thing and make me push I'm going to make another soundboard. I'm the one. I'm, you I'm, better not. I'm going to do I it, dude. cut that wire with scissors. No. Uh, if you are other sponsors, Zip-nap. if you hit the links in the episode description, Squarespace, CallRail, LinkedIn Premium, and Bloom Invoicing, you get other hookups. Holler if you hear those. No. Quit and, pointing at the screen. I'm about to break that finger. This is off. a good visual for the audio break people. That um, right off. Let's get this party start, started. We're going. Startle. We're going to you communist sure Poland. You sure about that? Hotty toddy. Sweat equity. That's whatever. Listening to the Sweat Equity Podcast. We're recording. Yeah, we're, we're fire- good. We're firing. We're good to go. All right. Um, we like to ask everybody that comes on the show some lightning round questions. Uh, so just real quick, you don't have to get into it, and then we'll end on a bigger question of the lightning round. Um, first one is: Did you listen to the podcast before coming on the show? Yes, today. Oh, interesting! Wow, We're, we got about a thirty percent hit rate on that. You got it's one? climbing, actually. Um, has anybody ever called you Sticky Stewicky? No, not not really. Okay, that was, that was it. Does God exist? I didn't come up with a lightning round question. All right, I'm being honest. Okay. Does Does God exist? Quite the swing. Yes. Okay. Nice. Uh, what's your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> I never sang, uh, sang karaoke, so I'm drawing blank here. It's okay. Okay. Doesn't like karaoke. It's all right. Not a fan of that. Um, you know, I think most people aren't. What's your spirit animal? I don't know why wolf just popped into my mind. I have no clue why. That's what it is never then. Check that. That's what it is. That's what popped into your head? I mean, yes, sir. Uh, you don't want to do it in kindergarten. I don't have to get my turn in. I don't know. Just go back and forth it's a so little far away, I can't read it. Is a hot dog a sandwich? I hate that one, though. No. See, you were going to make me ask that? The, the internet is aflame with this question, so. No. It's a resounding no. Um, I agree. I don't even understand why that's a question. Because it is a sandwich. <laughs> is a hamburger a sandwich? Yes. It's got two buns, baby. Uh, it's like its own thing. Who um, knows that? Fuck, Mary, kill, tacos, pizza, cheeseburger. <laughs> Gross, dude. Which ones? Which you never played that game? Skip it. I think nope. you should skip that one. Okay. That's okay. Fair. It's just gross. There, there, there is some American culture I don't have background in. <laughs> that, that's not American culture. That's just law being weird about <laughs> having sex with food. Uh, whatever. I loved American Pie. It came out in 1998 and set in me. And Pie wasn't even on the list. Uh, I would never do that to Pie. Um, uh, what? Uh, first do. time you French kissed a girl. Does that translate? I, don't think you would. I, I mean, is that when's the first time you kissed a girl or a guy or anybody? A 
I'm going to go. Okay. Um, why don't you tell everybody who you are, where to find you, all that kind of stuff, because I could do it, but I can't read out loud very well. So we let the guests do it, their own plug. Why don't you tell our audience uh, all that stuff? Okay, now I'm surprised once again, but I will do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, I'm author, uh, so I have 19 books on Amazon and everywhere else. Just type Michal Stavitsky and books and you will find my books. Uh, I have my own personal development blog, x one um, And I'm also a business owner. I have my own book advertising agency, resurrectingbooks.com. Wow. All right. You're a busy guy. 85,000 copies of over 19 books sold. Is that, uh, that's a stat I remember. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a correct stat now. It's over 90,000. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we have uh, an esteemed author. We've toyed around with taking this podcast and making it into a book just so we can tell everybody we're an author. Yeah, we got to do that. But the one question we do really want to ask, not a lightning round question, you can take your time with this, is uh, what advice would you give your 13-year-old self? Huh. 13-year-old, I was so clueless, like a true kiddo. And what? It's, it's really advice. When you... you give advice to yourself yeah it's like alex formosi likes to to talk about it's that guy stole her question all, <laughs> first of all it's you know uh you know the guy you are talking to yeah intimately the, the scenario knows, is the scenario is you yours. time travel yeah. it doesn't uh, it only affects you you are time traveling in a Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure. Yeah, he gets it. Okay. I thought he, he, was, he, I thought he was asking. asking. Oh, I thought like you were asking. No, he was explaining. No. He's got oh, I'm sorry. He's I'm sorry. He's obviously thought about it. I'm so he's sorry. going to do his thing and then you just go, <laughs> I'm so sorry. hey, let me explain the question that you already <laughs> understand. Let me just do that for you. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Please continue. I will. <laughs> it's hilarious with guys. <laughs> with you guys. Uh, so having this intimate knowledge about myself and my 30-year-old self, I would just tell the guy, don't sweet it, come on. It's all gonna be fine. Uh, you we are measuring up yourself to like the whole world. Stop doing that. You just need to be the best version of yourself. That's it. Nothing else. We're... Uh... You know, were you an anxious, nervous kind of guy growing up? Yes, yes, sir. Till 33, till I started my own transformation, I was terribly shy. Like, actually, one of my first projects was to just overcoming the shyness. So I can talk to people like you now in the international podcast, but I couldn't approach a stranger and utter a word. Like, I, I had rats in my uh, stomach i just couldn't do it yeah that's an underrated skill especially like public speaking you know that's something that i i mean they say it's the biggest fear for people yeah it's you know? uh the uh, seinfeld used to have a joke about it right mm -hmm. you'd rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy yep you gotta do it in his voice though you'd rather be in the coffin than doing the eulogy Ooh, pop tarts um <laughs> So, uh, where did you where where did you grow up? What were your parents entrepreneurial? I'll ask it. What is your accent? It's driving me crazy. I can't quite nail it. I mean, it's something Eastern European. Wherever Jokic's from. Uh, I, I yeah, Eastern Europe somewhere, maybe further east. I'm not sure. So please share that. Polish. Okay, there you go. Nailed it. Kind of. Your name, last name is Stowicki, so. Any good yeah. Polish jokes? Good. <laughs> Those used to be around a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, they got no. away from it. Not from me. We have uh, Polish, Russian, German jokes when, of course, Polish comes as a superior. Yeah. Right. And that's, it's because of the neighborhood. Yeah. Going back to your question, uh, I was raised in communist Poland yeah, till I was 10 years old. I lived in the communist regime, and then we had 
overnight change yeah. of everything. Uh, so my parents weren't especially entrepreneur, but kind of the whole nation had needed to be to just survive this, this shift. So my father, he had a solopreneur uh, business of installing uh, electricity in new buildings, fixing his electrical engineer very highly skilled, like his day job was in the factory as a main engineer, yeah, for all electricity. And he was doing this side gig after eight hours of wow. working in a factory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Communist factory too. Those, they don't mess around. There's communist, no benefit. Communist factories are they're rough. Ain't no ping pong table in a communist factory. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> break room. No sleeping no break pods. Room. You don't get a break. What are you talking about break room? No K cups, Keurigs. <laughs> so wait, how was that transition? I want to hear about that. The, what did your parents do before the fall of the wall or whatever? Yeah. So so we're talking like eighty uh, nine, right? Was the fall eighty nine exactly? Yeah. Uh, I have five sisters. So my mother was a, a housewife, and my father he worked in that factory as an engineer, electrical engineer. Um, and that was the reality before uh, 90, uh, sorry, 1989, sorry. Uh, and then hmm, everything, like we had crazy inflation in the like 50%, something like that. Like the money was worthless the next month. Uh -huh. uh, This is what I remember. Yeah, it was a struggle, and like everybody in our town felt like that because it was like plenty of Polish towns back then around a few factories, which now were struggling to uh, survive through this change. Yeah, will they even found uh, demand for whatever they offer? Uh, and it was like the whole country, so it was the time of feeling unsecure and out of that really uh, a lot of uh, hustle culture came like my father who worked his full shift and then he went back home like he worked from 6 a.m to 2 p.m then he went back home eat uh, a lunch get a short nap and he was off to his side gig working till 8 p.m. maybe yeah I this is my uh my remembering the, the Jeffrey days uh ah. father was absent because he was at work all the time when I was like 13 uh he actually started taking me to, to side jobs and I was helping him like a slave labor <laughs> yeah. well I mean more he had free the work ethic is it, that is incredible. I mean, it all it does is remind me how good we have it. Ah. You know, kind of where we're born that you can't, it's random, you know? Uh, and then it, I try to think of those things. Like, I'll probably think of this story anytime I'm bitching about having to do a lot of work. Right. Yeah. You know, we don't have to get a wheelbarrow to buy, you know, a bottle of water for, you know, filled with cash. Yeah. Where it's really a trillion percent increase. And then no one talks about the transition that's night and day. Cause it, it, yeah, I have so many questions. You think you would ease into that, right? That would make sense? No way. <laughs> and I guarantee there was probably a lot of people in your no, town that hate it. Taken. It's got to be taken. But like, so in communist countries, they own Car everything. drives you. How, yeah, but like, <laughs> how did it work with like the factory your dad worked in? You know, who owned that after we're like how did they decide who got what because i mean was it just like first guy to the boss's chair wins it how did that work yeah it was like fire sale um which now in the from the perspective of time we, we think yeah, that was stupid of us uh polish government yeah we just sold everything left and right for pennies uh -huh. and like really pennies now uh, just the sites are worth more than the 
crisis uh, 30 years ago, yeah, uh, like in the uh, centrum of a, of a big city. And mm-hmm. uh, one thing. Um, yeah, how do you yeah, and, how do and, you assign everybody to go like now you own this or well, now you, you manage this? Right. Like, well, it's just crazy because like you didn't have it to like you, yeah, it feels like a stupid decision, but did you have a choice? Like you had to bring in like outside money to make it happen, but like. Man, that's crazy to even think about. So, was it like big corporations coming in, scooping stuff yes. up? Yeah, because everything's yes, it, liquidated. It was, yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, they say they had a plan, but nobody had a plan. And what I really think worked and saved us was that there was no regulations. We started from scratch, so there were a lot of shoddy businesses done, and meaning. You know, like big corpus doing businesses with uh, former communist people who had contacts and could sell them this factory, that uh, business, and so on. Uh, but also, it allowed us, Polish people, to do our stuff. Some, you know, fortunes were created in early 90s because people. They were entrepreneurial. Like, I don't know how we got it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, no, they capitalized. Yeah, on there it. was no red tape. There was no, exactly. hey, you can't exactly. do this because you don't have a license from the government. What government? Amen. I'm doing whatever yep. I want, bro. They were opportunistic. Were buying, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's cool. I think about, I kind of always visualize a bread line when I hear communism. What happens with that? It, did y'all have a stipend of food? You know, I, I talk to my Cuban friends and they talk about, you know, I always say they they can do more things with a pig, you know, than anybody because they had to make all the rations kind of last as long as they could. And that's why Cuban food's maybe the best. My, my One of my favorites. But like they know how to do so much with so little and because they were only given a X amount of eggs per week, an X amount of whatever. Uh was that a situation as well? Like basic human needs that were provided by the government and then one one day or week or month, it was just like, bye. And you had to kind of figure it out on your own. Was it like that? No, it, it wasn't, uh, at least in Poland, never provided by government. And when we had to stay in lines for like meat, it was... <laughs> Because of inefficiencies of, of the communist uh, system, uh, but we, uh, Polish, were very lucky because somehow we got away with having a plenty of small farmers, like really, really small. And people who went to factory, but they have their own several acres or 20 and, and they work on, on that land. So when they're free market it was introduced they could sell locally and so it was never shortage of food uh, sometimes of processed food like i remember lines for sugar mm. like there was no sugar because it wasn't processed <laughs> probably or distributed uh, and yeah stuff and that needs infrastructure things. yeah exactly it's so right out of the ground but but uh, like you can always go to local market buy x uh, vegetables and so on yeah we've never i think we're asking a lot of basic questions cuz a we've never read a book about that transition <laughs> I, I i i don't know all the books you've read but i know you haven't read one about that you're right but <laughs> and so we're kind of curious on that transition this is personal I know. thing so like we're going to get to to how this dovetails into what he's doing we're total now. experts <laughs> on the fall of the soviet union but well, not it, on history i always think entrepreneurship uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneur it's a french word but it feels so american because we you we don't have if you do want to do something you can do it for the most part um there's i mean we have regulations on things like other countries but not as tight as other countries um and it's one of those things where you know we think about capitalism 
you know, there's, there's hate on capitalism. I love capitalism, but it's one of those things that we think it's, it's like when you introduce democracy in places that have a dictator, right? And you're like, this is good for them. They, they need this. They don't know they need it, but they need it. And then there's that transition period and you're like, Ooh, this was bad. Bring back the old guy. We, we did this too quickly. We need to do Amen. this. Amen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know? Um, Kept the trains on so time, you, at least. You never hear about that transition part from the point of view of someone in it or was in it. And then when you're talking about you had five sisters, I was I was thinking about farmland and how back in the day you would have a bunch of kids so they could run the farm. Yeah, you had labor. Did they, did, was there a lot of people that would just own land for centuries or something, like and parcel it out to their kids and then their kids kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. So, and so you all were becoming more commercialized in like one instant, almost. It felt like. Yeah, that yeah. was. Uh, and they we're talking eighties the, too. The shock therapy, and seriously, there was a deep shock in in the whole nation. Uh, and shock was not just you know capitalism; it was also freedom. Like from o- overnight, you can say things about the government hmm. before that it's another big one <laughs> yeah it, oh yeah it, we it, forget it about that one and well <laughs> so like so, what was the worst thing you saw come of it you personally of the transition yeah, yeah just like, of this yeah. this happening was it, there's got to be a lot of people that hated it right exactly because unemployment rate skyrocketed it was about 30 percent when i was Getting into the job market in 2004, it was 19 percent. Ooh, that's still and, high. Yeah, mm-hmm. and so that generation of my parents' generation and and my generation, we like were used to scarcity, and uh, in, in a you know the wrong way. It's it's so hard for us to imagine abundance because we were raised at at in this in this situation um so yeah personally i think that's the worst thing because it happened across the nation yeah it happened to all of us yes we are hard workers but also uh we are overly loyal to employees for example because yeah your job security is so important which i experienced in 2009 okay yeah, you can do what you can do, but if your employer doesn't provide like projects, um, and that's it. Yeah, where are you living now? How do uh, we're, you know, I want to try to get to how you got to where you are now from about two thousand four. Um, where where are you doing this from? Um, here you see my home office. It's in Poland, uh, near capital, just twenty five miles away. Um, so you've been here. You have you been living there the the entire this most of your life, or yes, I'm the, by the way, I'm the only one from my family wow. who is still in Poland. Uh, the... My five sisters emigrated. My parents emigrated, which was which was also a part of landscape when it comes hmm. in do, 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 uh, sorry this years since two thousand four when the. You, uh, we joined uh, European Union, and we could and move to other countries and work there. Like plenty of people emigrate. Yeah, that's a big. That would be a big one. Getting in the UN, and uh, y'all got on the Euro at some point. I don't. I don't remember when, but well, that's a big Not deal, yet. huh? Not yet. We Not yet. Oh, still our oh, currency. Yeah, but we when we joined, we said one day we will uh, move to Euro and. We just never said when exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's a very complicated situation to do. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean. Um, Switch over everybody's money. Well, yeah, that's. that's I don't what, know you, same time. Same that time. can be a lot of the. <laughs> that could be a lot of the trouble of trying to work with your neighboring countries uh, as import, export. Especially is when like, they're all European dicks. Well, there's that. Yeah. Who, who do you, who are your Mexicans? Who do you make fun of? What? I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say anything about Mexicans. Yeah. I said about European. No, it's not even my question. I borrowed that from someone. Seriously, uh, everyone has their own Mexicans. We don't because 
we were make fun of, yeah. So right now we have Ukrainians. Come on, there's some. There's always of, someone of you gotta that. make fun of that's next door. You did mention that you had German and Russian jokes earlier, so if you could okay, hit us with yeah. one of those. Yeah, I mean, that's you can make fun of Germans for really situation. fucking up. They really screwed <laughs> the pooch well, there. Germany and Russia. That's a difference between <laughs> those guys. Yeah, but you can't make it's, fun of them for too long because then that anger will probably pop out. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they're the like, German "Haha, yeah, we really fucked up World War Two, all that yeah. stuff." And then they're like, "Okay, that's enough." And then it's like, "It's enough." We ever have that? Yeah. Okay. Going back yeah. to my transition, I, yeah, I yes, please, please. Yeah, yeah, you you host the show. I, uh, thank you. <laughs> I uh, I worked in IT. Yeah, I finished college. I got IT job, uh, and in Poland it was like at the beginning I got. Uh, to average salaries, so I could afford to live. I could afford to raise my family. I had three kids. We started early. Uh, we got married when I was uh, in college, uh, and I was moving from one job to another. In 2013, I was working in big media company, the biggest, like one of the. Uh, fortunes made during the transition was this company actually it's the biggest polish media company Polsat, and i was miserable as a corporate cog and i just didn't see my future in there and i was so dissatisfied with my life which was okay on all fronts like i had family good job uh, but when i I was in that life, so I could easily look under this, you know, uh, social media shiny uh, surface. I was overweight. Uh, my health wasn't that great. I was shy as hell. Like I had some relationships, but I, I never started a new one. Uh, just was I was too shy for that, and I just felt well. There is something more to life, to my place in life. Um, and it was Providence in 2013. I was on vacation uh, in Ireland visiting my parents and also my sister who traveled the world because she's a dancer. Uh, she was there on her vacation and she had a book, A Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. In the book, uh, it's around the message of Jim Rohn. Success is a few simple disciplines repeated over time. And for me, that was, whoa, I thought success is something grand. Golden medal at Olympics, starting a new Microsoft. And of course, I couldn't do those things, so I will not be uh, as successful, never. Thank you, goodbye. But small, simple things, it really opened my mind and since then I started like I tripled down on my personal development and rediscovered my uh, desire to write um, and eight year, and months later I published my first book on Amazon that's a pretty that's great awesome. story that's I mean, awesome this podcast is I really I feel that all day yeah man it's really for an audience of people that have that nexus point where they're sitting in a job they hate, they're frustrated, it's taking a toll on their mental and physical health a lot of the time. Uh, and you go, you get that frustration point. And, you know, there is a part of the timeline where you stay there and you're just kind of miserable your mm -hmm. whole life. And you go, this is safe. I can do this. Right. Uh, Until it's too much. Or you, you, uh, so for you, it sounded like, you may have been unaware of some of this self-help, self-development kind of whole genre out there to even, to even go like, Oh, I should, I'm going to read that book. And then that book kind of leverages or you capitalize on that. Well, it just shows like sometimes things just have to be said to you in a certain way that your brain clicks in with it. But also he, he was mean, thinking, well, I can't do these things. So like, I'm not going to be a real success. But I'm thinking but like, of the hangover of communism, too. There's not probably a lot of self-starters. There's not a lot of people that are thinking in that direction around you, probably, right? You're right. working at a good media company. Maybe there's movers and shakers there. But 
you know, it's really easy when you're hang when a lot of people aren't feeling that kind of mode or self development for themselves kind of thing. I'm, yeah, I'm but, guessing. I don't know. Well, to me, he had the desire to do something with his life, but in his mind, it was a technicality sort of thing where it's like, well, you know, I'm in a post communist country, whatever, and you know, I'm not going to be able to really reach these heights because of administrative well, issues i i think it's very common it's just human thing it was just right. my self-worth yeah i couldn't believe in myself mm -hmm. seriously the the biggest um struggle for me was the first month since reading the book i was mulling over this like it need to be so simple can i do it like i had to give myself permission to try and that was the hardest thing i did in my life like then when I started uh, my transformation, I was working full time, commuting two, three hours a day, writing uh, on trains and back, sleeping five hours a day. I remember publishing my sixth book. Yeah, like I stayed till 2 a.m. to finally hit the publish button and I woke up at 4 a.m. to go to my day job. That was easy. Giving myself permission to try it, that was the hardest thing in my life. So if anybody's listening out there, there there's that two there's two parts to that, right? You have to you have to allow yourself to do it and not be defeatist in your own kind of idea of doing it. Then here's where I think a lot of Americans really kind of miss this is you actually have to try it. You actually right. have to try the discipline thing you just read. Yeah. A lot of people might know it or re even read about it give themselves permission, they won't make themselves their own guinea pig for whatever reason that is. And that's the frustration point I have talking to friends sometimes. It's like, well, if this is bothering you over months, years of this It part, must not be that bad. Well, no. Is what I think. Oh, no. It's like, it must not be that bad on you if you keep doing the same thing over and over again and you're not changing it. You're just, you just like talking about it. Well, it's like your friend that asks for advice and they're going to do whatever they do anyway. Right. It, and they always, I have a friend that has done that since high school. And it's like, now I just go, you're going to do what you want to do anyway, but I'm going to tell you what I think. Yeah. Just so I get it off my chest yeah. um, for you. But it's that thing of like, no one does the guinea pig part. You go, okay, hypothesis. Does these, do these small discipline things really work to to alter my life in a positive direction. And you actually did it. Now, a lot of people overthink about it. They already think about the failure part first, or they don't think about, you know, they don't dangle their own carrot on like, I, I need to shake something up at the very least mm -hmm. would be a net positive. Just well, lots of people I think are like, I can't take another loss. I can't start something new and then, because it's going to fail take back. again. Yeah, they don't think about like, it. Like, oh man, that's going to be terrible for me. A lot of people think like it's going to supplant what they're doing currently and that'll go down if they try this other thing. Right. Not not on top of what they're doing. Well, yeah, it's just more like how much worse can it get and they expect things to get worse. And with that mentality, it spirals. It's yeah, it's, you're spiraling yourself into doing nothing and which in turn, long term, makes it even worse. So... I want to ask this part before we depart, but this is a, you have a wildly interesting story and kind of really a lot of the reason we have the show. So, uh, you know, kudos to you on your life. <laughs> yes. Um, and your accent. I am going to rewatch this one to learn your accent. <laughs> and, uh, I so can't do Polish. I didn't even really think about it, but now I have to. <laughs> um, so you said you were very shy. It's very, I think it's hard to be entrepreneurial unless you're just an internet, unless you have an app programmer kind of thing, something that you can do by yourself without having to talk to any humans. Um, but you said your crippling shyness was, you know, a problem, but you did get married and got laid at least three times by my count. Um, how did you get your wife? How did you, I want to see that. And I bet it's related to how you overcame the shyness. I bet you extrapolated that out. That's my theory. You missed. Damn it. Like by, by a mile. I'm, ah, I'm so a mentalist, dude. She was inside. I can't she do mentalist me. stuff on Polish people. Minus 10. <laughs> oh, that's so what it she is. was inside. She she asked me. Uh, that's how we started. Uh, she asked you out. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Communist country, one like ask that. you. I like an alpha lady like that, though. It's all, no, it's all yeah, reversed. it's just a very shy guy. That's how you need to catch him. So, By the way, girls, IT guys, the best prey for you. Come on, they will <laughs> not do anything, and they hear so much. What are you waiting for? Yeah, that's is that your stand-up set? <laughs> uh, who's that? Yeah. That's for us. <laughs> He's, the the difference between men and women. Um, yeah, I can. I have a. Book. I think he's we just both. like looking out for the IT guys in general. I mean, you probably could use it. Yeah, but you know, so like, how did you? Did, now, did your was your wife the reason you were able to get over your shyness later? Did she? Is she the one that pushes you? I feel like there's always a woman involved well, in some something. No, like that. yeah, it's <laughs> it's kind of because yeah, part of, of my um, this desire to change was. She was nagging me. Okay, you're more. Oh man, like, we cannot afford this. We cannot afford that's that. That's the other. That's <laughs> exactly. the other N word women don't want to hear. Uh, yeah, <laughs> naggers. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I because like uh, like you said, out of my own comfort, I wouldn't maybe start. But I was a bit pushed out of my comfort zone. She wanted more from her life. Um. So that's one thing. An actual way I overcame my shyness? Small steps. Very, very small steps. Like, uh, I deconstructed how, what is the, this whole process of approaching a person and starting conversation? And uh, I, I realized that I, I was so shy, I didn't really try to notice other people like this person who just looked into the ground and like I technically saw them but I like you see a homeless person yeah you pretend you don't see them so that was me my whole life uh, not just homeless everybody mm-hmm. yeah um so my my first small discipline was okay let's start noticing people around me recognizing them, start thinking about how I could approach and start a conversation. Uh, I figured out I could do that with a compliment. Um, and also I was conducting this conversation in my head because I was just too shy to start. I was too fearful. And uh, then my next discipline was uh, making a connection, smiling, and I tracked those things. Like, I was very nerdy about those. <laughs> I was going to say, this yeah. sounds like a very Eastern European reverse engineering uh, mentality to take. Yeah. It was, it was just because when I had this uh, first moment of setting goals, okay, I will overcome my shyness. So how I will do it? We, by speaking to strangers, because I know that uh, just scared the shit off of me. Uh, uh, but then I tried, and I couldn't. I was too scared. I just couldn't. I, I, I was physically unable to. Then I had to deconstruct it to so small pieces that I finally could do something. I could, by myself, notice other people around me. I could have a conversation in my head. I could look at people and then smile at them. And finally, I could start the conversation. The whole process took surprisingly short, like I would say half a year, and I was able to confidently speak with people, start strike a conversation with anybody at any time. Yeah, yeah, marginal gains. Yeah, it's just so crazy that power your brain can have over you. Of because I mean, it was probably quick because you got to a point where you're like, oh, what am I? What was I afraid of? What was I for that? Everybody's going to pull out a gun and shoot me. What was going to happen? You know, and it's like, but when, before that happens, that shit is so real. That fear that people, you know, and it's just like, you can tell people, say a lot of things, that people, but until they do it for themselves, it, it's just overwhelming, obviously. Everything you said made me feel like when I take too much uh, edibles, and then I don't know how to talk to people right. <laughs> if I have to. Well, you got to stop just it's stop going to public. I, yeah, I got to stop doing that. Um, but sometimes you, you didn't know it was a higher milligram. 
I know, but you know, I've been trying to coach you up on this. I know. So you long. have been you good coach yourself. Coach Red. I, you know, I've got raw talent, but I don't listen sometimes. I know. You're very uncoachable. Um, no, I'm coachable. I just got, you know, sometimes I got to drive to the hole. Um, yeah, and it's one of those things where you fail. Like, I get a lot of, like, how do you go on stage uh, and not freak out? And it's like, oh, I failed a lot. Oh, I, I, you just got to stop giving a shit. And over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times of doing it, you don't care. I'm no. going to go do a set tonight. I don't know what I'm talking about yet, but it doesn't, I'm not worried about it at all. 15 years ago, I'd be like, fuck, 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 It'll be in my head the whole time. Yeah. So, um, well, you have an interesting story. I hope people uh, go find your books. You have an ebook out that you're promoting. Is that correct? Um. Uh. For your audience, I have something I, well, it's not available on the internet by itself. You need to reach out to me and uh, it's a self-coaching uh, mini course. So you can go over establishing a goal, finding what stops you and then tracking your way to success on your own. It takes like 50, 30 minutes. Uh, uh, and all you need to do is to find me on LinkedIn and send me the message business 24. I will send you back the way to register for that mini course. And that's what I have for. Yeah. You're on uh, X, solopreneurs. Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Send the DM business 24 without spaces and you'll get that hookup. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, you, man. you have an interesting life. Uh, more power to you. I hope you're, you're still making the, the incremental gains. Yeah, your voice will be ringing in my head for a minute here until I figure it out. So maybe I'll send you a voice message in your own voice. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> hey, I've been working on your voice. What did I just say? I don't give a shit. <laughs> That's so stalkerish. It's like stand up. Mm hmm. Yep. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Thanks. It was great.